Today we'll be talking through an excessive amount of maths, trying to determine what are the best shooty dreadnoughts to include in your Space Marine army. Hello and welcome back to Allspets Tactics, the strategy and tactics 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our models on the tabletop. Today's video takes us back into the realm of comparing dreadnoughts, this time we're going to pretty much ignore close combat and focus entirely on guns. Broadly speaking, I've tried to divide the dreadnoughts up into two main categories, those packing las cannons and missile launchers, and those armed with auto cannons or similar equivalents. Firstly, we'll take a look at the efficiency that they can put out damage, then how well they take damage from various different weapons, and finally talk about some other external factors as to whether or not to take one or the other in an actual game of 40k. In these comparisons, I've chosen to use the amount of damage dealt per 100 points as the main metric, as the dreadnoughts that we're looking at really have quite a big difference in the amounts of points cost they have. All that being said, let's take a look. We'll start with the autocannon variant dreadnoughts first. So here are our autocannon dreadnought contenders, and the average damage output we'll expect from 100 points of that unit against a few different units. We're assuming Devastator Doctrine for the comparison, as it makes the most sense for the Dreadnoughts to be in if they can get it, and we're going to have them taking aim at a Primaris Space Marine, a typical two-wound target, then a light vehicle such as a Guard Basilisk, a medium vehicle such as a Space Marine Rhino, and a heavy vehicle such as a Guard Lehman Ross. Our contenders for the Autocannon Dreadnought Crown are a Quad Autocannon Morsis Dreadnought, this one's armed with four Autocannons from the Forge World Adeptus Astartes Index, the same thing but for a Contemptor Mortis Dreadnought, who has the advantage of hitting on twos, 10 wounds and a 5 plus invul save. An Autocannon and Typhoon Missile Launcher Relic Contemptor Mortis, who again hits on twos, but is significantly more durable, so it makes a bit more sense to pile more guns on him, as they're more likely to be safe. Then we have the surprise entrant of an Autocannon Invictor, technically not a Dreadnought, but does actually compete surprisingly well in terms of its ranged damage output, despite having decent close combat prowess as well. Then we have a Relic Derrideo Dreadnought with its Anvilus Auto Cannon Array. These are 36 inch range strength 8 auto cannons with 8 shots, and again it hits on 2s, and the Derrideo also has heavy bolters. Finally, we have one of the dark horses of the meta at the moment, a Storm Cannon Leviathan Dreadnought, which has 20 strength 7 AP 3 shots in Devastator Doctrine with 2 damage, although be aware that his range is significantly shorter than all of the rest of these dreadnoughts. The first thing to note is that the Storm Cannon Leviathan takes the prize in terms of highest damage output in every single category. To be honest, it really kind of should take the prize for this, because its guns are so much shorter range, and that really is a limitation. It can't just blaze away at enemy units on the other side of the map, it needs to focus down things that are closer. It's significantly ahead against the Primaris Space Marines, in total on average dealing about 18 wounds to them from one blitz of its Storm Cannon Array. It's also decently ahead on the Toughness 6 and Toughness 7 vehicles, but when we look at starting turning our auto cannons on Rosses, naturally they get a little bit less efficient, so the Strength 8 variants tend to compete a little bit better with that, the Relic Derrideo and the Relic Contemptor. Talking of the Derrideo, that gets a solid second place in every single damage category. For the purposes of this comparison, I've been assuming it's shooting its heavy bolters and its Anvilus auto cannons at the same target, though in actual fact it might make more sense to use the heavy bolters to take out light infantry and the Anvilus auto cannons to go after heavies but that would only make it more efficient, so even firing in this slightly inefficient way, it's impressive to see that it does come out a solid second in every single category here. In particular, it's basically the equal of the Leviathan when you're targeting Lehman Ross tanks, due to the heavy bolters still wounding on 5s, and the Anvilus autocannon still wounding on 4s. That's not bad at all, considering it can do this at significantly longer range than the Leviathan. Taking third place against all of the vehicle targets, is the 4 Auto Cannon and Typhoon Missile Launcher Contemptor, in general those Typhoon Missiles, pushing it over the edge against light vehicles. It isn't quite as strong point for point when it's targeting infantry, and particularly in lighter infantry than Primaris Space Marines, it's going to get outcompeted by the other variants. But against light vehicles, the combination of Auto Cannons wounding well and Typhoon Missile Launchers putting through some extra damage certainly makes this one another very solid pick. Finally, we get onto the Quad Auto Cannon Mortis, the Quad Auto Contemptor, and the Invictor Warsuit with its Iron Hail autocannons, all of which are almost exactly the same damage output when they fire all their guns at the same unit. It's interesting to see that the Quad Auto Mortis and the Quad Auto Contemptor come out with exactly the same numbers pretty much. Against all targets, the Quad Auto Contemptor is obviously better ballistic skill, but this is completely accounted for by its increased points cost. 
Again, for the autocannon Invictor, I've shot all of its guns at the same target, which wouldn't necessarily be the most efficient thing to do, as you'd probably want to be throwing those iron hail heavy stubbers and its heavy bolter into lighter infantry. Nevertheless, you certainly don't have to do this, and it's good to know that if you don't, it basically still has the same damage output on a point-for-point -point basis as the Quad Auto Mortis and the Quad Auto Contemptor, which I think is really impressive for its stats, considering it can also do melee as well, and it's also a lot better at killing light infantry. Indeed, it just noses into third place, past the Velic Contemptor, for shooting down Primaris Marines. So that's firepower then. Leviathan wins, though it's short-ranged. Derrideo solid second for the 36 inch range bracket, and the Relic Contemptor wins for the most part at long range. But let's take a look at their durability now. In this little table we'll look at the amount of shots of each type of weapon it will take to kill an average of 100 points of this unit. So essentially a third of the Leviathan, half of the wounds off the Quad Auto Relic Contemptor, and so on. We've looked at small arms, auto cannon fire, missile launch fire, and last cannon fire. First up we have the Bolters, which struggle the most against the Storm Cannon Leviathan, which isn't really too much of a surprise, they will only be wounding on 6s as its toughness 8, and with a 2 up save it'll be shrugging off almost anything. Small arms just really aren't a problem for this thing. The same is very true for the Relic Contemptor, not quite as ludicrously durable, but still very good. And in third place comes the Auto Cannon Invicta, surprisingly enough, edging out its toughness 7 rivals, due to Bolters still wounding toughness 6 on 5s, and it having an absolute enormous amount of wounds. When we turn auto cannons on the units, it's actually pretty much a tie between the Contemptor and the Leviathan in terms of durability. They both have two up saves, which are great against auto cannons, and the factor that lets the Contemptor catch up is the fact that it gets a six up feel no pain type save against all incoming damage, which combined with 12 wounds and a two up save makes it exceptionally durable. The rest of the dreadnoughts are all fairly even, going down a lot easier to strength 7 auto cannon fire. In particular, the Invicta isn't quite as strong in this bracket, due to being toughness 6 and therefore at the biggest weak point for strength 7. But still, it's not significantly worse than the Derrideo, and in fact it's either equal or better compared with the poor Mortis and regular Contemptor. If we move on to look at Missile Launcher, strength 8 AP-2 fire, the Invicta comes back very strong here, and it actually ties with the Relic Contemptor for first place. The fact that it's got a lot of wounds, it's still only wounded on 3s just like the Toughness 7 Dreadnoughts, and not needing to worry about any sort of inball save, means that the Invicta performs really well for its points here. And the Contemptor does well too, due to its 2-up armour and its feel no pain, but the price tag makes it a little more inefficient. Next comes the Leviathan, AP-2 being a bit of a weak point for it, as it's high enough to mess up its armour without being high enough to actually trigger its inball save. In 4th comes the Relic Derrideo, and then the... Mortis and Contemptor come joint last. Finally, when we look at last cannons, the Invicta actually wins this contest, just edging out the Derrideo and the Contemptor, mainly because it's so much cheaper points per wound. The Derrideo performs quite well against last cannon fire, because it will actually get its invul save with this, and that does make a difference. Elsewhere, the Leviathan falls a little behind here, despite triggering its 4 plus invul. It does have quite a high points per wound cost, so at least in this rules vacuum, it isn't quite as durable although we do all know that Leviathans can certainly be souped up to silly levels of durability by various combinations of rules and stratagems. Finally, on this bracket, the Contemptor does a lot better than the regular Mortis due to that invul save coming into effect. From this durability table, the Invicta, Leviathan, Derrideo and Relic Contemptor all perform very strongly and in terms of points per wound outstrip the regular Contemptor and the regular Mortis. So that's autocannons then. Let's take a look at the various dreadnoughts that we can give las cannons and missile launchers to. So in this table we're looking at the damage output of various las cannon arms dreadnoughts. We've got a quad las mortis dreadnought, a quad las cannon contemptor dreadnought, a quad las relic contemptor with a typhoon missile launcher thrown on top, and then from the main codex, the old reliable las cannon missile launcher venerable dreadnought, and its regular dreadnought alternative. Finally, I thought I'd just see how the numbers shaped up versus the quad last predator to see how it compares. These dreadnoughts are only ever going to be efficient when they're firing against vehicles, so I didn't bother with infantry for this analysis. We're just looking at how they shape up against toughness 7 and toughness 8 vehicles, both with and without a 5 plus inball save. The first thing to note is that the quad las and typhoon missile launcher relic contemptor wins all categories. To be honest, there's not a whole lot in it compared with the regular quad las contemptor or even the mortis in terms of a damage output per point efficiency, but it is definitely best. It's the extra typhoon missile launcher that I've included that does the trick here. 
it makes it into an exceptionally killy dreadnought, and it justifies its high points cost, which is quite high at 222. Next up we have the Quad Las Contemptor Dreadnought, one of the most efficient Las Cannon sources in the Space Marine Codex, and again this one claims second in every category. Now technically I could have included a Typhoon Missile Launcher on top of the Quad Las Contemptor, and this would have it beating out the Relic Contemptor in terms of the most damage output per point, so you could certainly argue that the Contemptor Mortis does win if you give it a Typhoon Missile Launcher as well. However, I would probably upgrade to the Relic Contemptor if I had the option to, just because of the durability upgrade, which we'll see in the next slide. Following this, the last cannon mortis performs admirably in this comparison, far better than the auto cannon mortis in the previous slide. It comfortably takes third in all categories, and isn't far at all behind the other variants. Following that, we have the two last cannon missile launcher dreadnoughts from the main codex, the venerable dreadnought being more efficient in terms of damage output per point invested, but really not by a lot, they're pretty much even. The quad last cannon predator is also round about this sort of bracket, being pretty much even with the regular dreadnought in all stats, though it does slightly outperform it against a toughness 8 3 up save Lehman Ross. So a victory for the relic contemptor dreadnought, at least in this comparison, but how will they do in durability? As we can see, the relic quad last contemptor performs very very well in durability as well. We're targeting the Dreadnoughts with the same four weapons, a Bolter, Auto Cannon, Missile and Last Cannon, and in terms of points killed, despite being such a ludicrously expensive Dreadnought, the Relic Contemptor with the Typhoon Missile Launcher still wins out. It's a combination of the 2-up armor save, 12 wounds, and the 6-up Feel No Pain type save that put it over the edge. It might be a little bit more even in an Iron Hands army, where everyone gets the 6 plus Feel No Pain type save no question asked, but assuming you're not in that particular chapter, then this Relic Contemptor really does win the durability contest hands down. Funnily enough, the last cannon missile launcher Venerable Dreadnought is the runner-up of the durability contest, provided it's being shot by something that's AP2 or worse, narrowly beating out the Quad Last Contemptor. If we had upgraded the Quad Last Contemptor with a Typhoon missile launcher, it'd be significantly down the rankings here, just as we'd be putting so many more points in for no additional durability. Rounding it off, the last cannon missile launcher Dreadnought is the next most durable, then the Predator tank, with the Quad Las Mortis being the most vulnerable. This high damage output, combined with very low durability, makes the Quad Las Mortis a really good choice for that Iron Hand stratagem that allows the Dreadnought to be a character, and therefore untargetable. So you can pocket all of the very nice damage output it has, and remove this weak durability from the equation pretty much. So, in terms of last cannon platforms, at least from raw maths in terms of damage output and durability, the Relic Contemptor is the best in both cases which really shouldn't be the case from a game balance point of view. It's not tons and tons better than the other options, but it is better, and I honestly hadn't realised that it does win in pretty much every maths contest, damage and durability wise, so I've definitely most certainly learnt something new by making this video. All the numbers aside, let's talk about a few other factors that come into deciding which of these dreadnoughts are the best. Firstly, we mentioned it before, but range is critical, in particular the 24-inch Leviathan Storm Cannons and the Derrida's 36-inch Anvilus Auto Cannons are definitely a bit more limited than some of the other options available. I feel like, to some extent, Games Workshop have balanced this reasonably well, because the Leviathan does have the best damage output, but the lowest range, and the Derrida has the second best in the Auto Cannon category, which befits the trade-off with long range. Both of these can certainly gain a buff from the Dark Angels, Extra Long Range Devastator Doctrine, which is another factor to consider. Mobility is another one that we didn't touch on. The Invictus the best here with a 10 inch movement, really helping it nip about the board and reposition optimally, as well as potentially line up for charges. After that, the Contemptors, Leviathan and Derrideo all have better movement than the Mortis, Venerable Dreadnoughts or regular Codex Dreadnoughts, and there are likely going to be times when that extra couple of inches movement is key to getting them in range or getting a key line of sight. There are some pros and cons to being either a very big Dreadnought with all of your guns concentrated in one unit, or spreading them out across multiple smaller Dreadnoughts. In particular, the Relic Leviathan, the Relic Contemptor, and the Derrideo are all very big Dreadnoughts, so any stratagems or one unit buffs that you put on them will be comparatively more valuable, compared with doing the same thing to say a regular Mortis Dreadnought or something. In particular, Duty Eternal is one of the best buffs that you can put on a Dreadnought, halving its incoming damage, and I'm sure we've all seen or heard what can happen with that and Leviathan Dreadnoughts at the moment, though it's still great on other big Dreadnoughts such as Derrideos or Contemptors. There's plenty of other options for single unit buffs, such as stratagems to increase damage output, which the Leviathan in particular will love, or things like the Iron Hand's Ironstone, 
which is another way of adding an extra layer of durability to one single dread. All of these are big advantages for the bigger, more points intensive dreadnoughts, which do help the Leviathan, Derideo, and Relic Contemptor to dominate their respective categories. That being said, there are a few benefits to having smaller dreadnoughts. Things like debuffs or having them tagged in close combat isn't necessarily as easy to do if you've got multiple dreadnoughts in multiple locations. Also, in particular, and, and quite relevantly for the current meta, Master Artisans will get you more rerolls if you have more units. That's the Salamander style reroll where you can reroll one hit roll and one wound roll per turn. So, say for example, if you had two auto cannon contemptors, you'd get four rerolls per turn, a hit roll and a wound roll for each, compared with if you took a Leviathan, which would only get one hit roll and wound roll reroll. It's not the biggest factor in the world, but it is something that could potentially push you in favour of smaller dreadnoughts. Next we have Ballistic Skill, in particular the Dreadnoughts that have a 2-up Ballistic Skill have an advantage in and of themselves as well as just the damage output. It's more resilient to modifiers than Ballistic Skill 3+, as say if your opponent has minus 1 to hit, going from 2 plus to 3-up is less of a jump than going from 3 plus to 4 plus, at least percentage wise, and that also goes for moving and shooting. Again we touched on it when we did the maths, but having multi-purpose shooting is certainly a positive. In particular, the Derideo and Invicta have guns that you could split up, shoot the auto cannons at the heavies, and shoot the lighter weapons at the infantry. And the Leviathan can also do this somewhat with hunter-killer missiles as well. Now I know this hasn't been a full review of every single Dreadnought. There are other unit-specific factors that could draw you to one or away from another. These include, but are certainly not limited to, things like the Invicta being able to infiltrate and fight in close combat, but it can't use Duty Eternal. The Derideo could take that Atomantic Pervice and give 5 plus invul saves to everyone around it. Some of them are Relic Dreadnoughts, which means that you have to include another Elite or Heavy Support choice to be able to field them in the first place. And things like the Venerable Dreadnought and Mortis Dreadnought don't degrade in the first place, which is definitely a positive. Finally, after all that, we also have to think about synergies for your individual chapter with the Dreadnought. I mentioned Dark Angel's extra range will give you another nudge towards the Leviathan and the Derideo where Imperial Fist's increased damage might encourage you towards one of the autocannon variants such as the Derideo perhaps. Different Dreadnoughts can certainly benefit more from different chapter traits and doctrines. So in summary, the best last cannon Dreadnought is arguably the Relic Contemptor, with Quad Laz and a Typhoon Missile Launcher, both in terms of durability and damage output, with the standard Quad Laz Contemptor following close behind. In terms of the autocannon wielding variants, in general you get the benefits for the range that you're willing to employ, with the Leviathan being the strongest damage output, then the Relic Derideo, then the rest, and it's a bit more of a mixed bag with durability, with a lot of the Dreadnoughts being decently strong, depending on the exact type of incoming fire. I think at some point I might have to convert myself a Relic Contempt Dreadnought, it certainly seems to be punching above its weight at the moment, though be aware that Games Workshop is updating the Forge World rules in the near future, so certainly the damage output and numbers might change. If I've made any mistakes or errors, please let me know down in the description below. I know there were a lot of numbers to crunch manually in the making of this video, so I wouldn't be surprised if some errors might have slipped through. Let me know if you have any opinions on running any of the Dreadnoughts, particularly if you have experience with the Relic Contemptor. That's certainly a Dreadnought that's piqued my interest from making this vid. Feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics if this has interested you. We have regular 40k content coming out every single day, including plenty of Math Hammer like this. And finally, the channel does have a Patreon page. Making all of these videos takes a lot of time, and at some point I'd quite like to get this to be something I can do on a more full-time basis, rather than mainly working in weekends and evenings. So any support you could give the channel would be greatly appreciated. If you are enjoying the content, you'll find the link in the description below. Thanks very much for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.